Edward J. Valentine and the Congo Dandies. Initially when Edward invited me over to assess and quotes on the actual job itself, I was so excited by the amount of wall space and the project itself, the theme, everything, it all grabbed my attention really, really quickly. So, so I overlooked a lot of things that, uh, take, that inevitably became quite problematic. Wall number one was actually such a story to do. There were multiple problems that I encountered right away from the beginning, starting with the reference. The reference itself was really quite blurry because it was still taken from the actual advert itself. I initially tried to freehand draw the entire thing onto the wall and I just, I just simply just couldn't make it work. There were so many dimples in the walls and the bricks and everything else that it made it quite difficult for me to pull any sort of detail in crucial areas. So I needed to kind of step back and what I ended up doing was after three to four days of really really battling between the rain between the, the the pits in the wall between all sorts of hellish factors I decided to start from scratch I took the initial reference and I broke it down I found uh, sharper images of the actual characters and I placed them all into their environment in a much better way I was able to to um, move forward at that step and actually give a give the Congo dandies more of a presence in the in the mural itself even though I realigned those characters quite a bit to try and get them into perfect positions so that their faces would stand out of the crowd it still lacked in a lot of ways uh, yeah in the future I might go back and work on that wall again there, there were a few things that I uh, inevitably wasn't happy with the second wall was I'm gonna call it the finger it's the guy that uh, in the advert he, he flicks his glasses up and it's it's quite like an iconic kind of image it, it, like, it tells a story all on its own which made it fascinating to do but I, I freehand drew him as well across the, uh, the it's like a story with a indented doorway Dude, the blue was beautiful and it, it really like popped so many of the browns and skin tones that uh, it forced that image to go forward and it was quite nice or oh, it forced that image to bounce off that wall at the same time while I was doing that I worked on the outside one with the umbrella now I did this one several times because of the, the fact that I initially placed the umbrella too close to the roof uh, it, it seemed like a good idea at the time but I didn't really like it once I'd, once I'd kind of completed it so I took the umbrella away and did it again and then I was really fascinated with trying to make the shadow work. Um, initially I had, I was going for the same color scheme of clothing as the, the guy, I mean, the finger. Um, but at a later stage I decided to change that because they weren't housing their own space. And from a distance you could see the two of them together and they simply weren't working. With the new umbrella I decided to go and paint it right onto the roof itself so that uh, and that took a little bit of a weird perspective. I did find that by doing that, I was happier with the end result. Also, having the umbrella go onto the roof itself made a huge difference to the overall project. And the end result was a lot, lot better. A lot more palatable and a little bit more of a conversation piece. I changed the guy's face several times. It, it ended up not being any of, the, any of the guys from the actual advert, but I found a really cool face to use. I think he was a model from Sweden or something and I got him painted in place I had to change the hands a couple of times because the hands were really buggered but you know the, the end result was actually quite a good one the one to finish off the project for the outside bar area was uh, the 90 year old man that leans back on his walking stick it's a pivotal moment in the actual in the advert itself. He pulls off this move where he's using his walking stick and he leans back just ever so slightly. And you just see everybody in the crowd like mimicking him and it's beautiful. It's like a, one of those really like gangster so without moves, if you follow me. While working on that uh, on the, the last one, I had several problems with rain coming through a sealed roof. At one point it washed off the actual paint that had just been put on so just before the paint got a chance to dry on the actual wall and bond the rain came in 
and separate it. <sighs> this happened more times than I can actually mention throughout the entire project. But hey, what can you do? I do apologize to everybody. Uh, I know I've been away for quite a long time and uh, what matters is that I am no longer away. I'm back now and I'm going to be trying. I'm going to be working really hard to fill my slot and get as many projects out and on the web as possible. This is probably going to be one of my new studios if the sound works out on this, um, I'm hoping. It is quite loud, but I find that I drive in Ireland more than I actually do anything else. So, this is going to be my studio. It seems like the most time efficient way to, to record and talk about the projects I've done. Thank you for spending your time with me. Your eyes are much appreciated. I hope you have a fantastic day because anything less is unacceptable. Bye.